I'm Arnie Gunderson of Fairwinds Associates. I wanted to talk to you today about the radiation releases that are coming from the Fukushima nuclear reactor complex. First off, I wanted to take a look at the slide that's up right now. It's the same one that was on in my previous presentation, but we're going to look at a different spot. You see those tall, um, but tall pointy structures around the nuclear reactors. They sort of look like transmission towers. Well, they're not. They're called stacks, like a smokestack, except it's not smoke that goes up them, but radioactive gases. Now, they're there for a purpose. They were there because engineers believed that you could vent the um, nuclear radiation after an accident up a stack and get better dispersion. In other words, it was designed to throw that radiation high in the air so it would disperse well. They're not working. And the reason they're not working is twofold. First, there's large fans that are required to push the air up those stacks. Well, fans require electricity and there's no, there's no electricity at Fukushima right now. So for the entire first 11 days of the, of the nuclear accident, those stacks have not worked. Well, there's a second problem, too. Those stacks were designed to suck air out of the containment buildings. And, you know, as the picture indicates, there's not much of a building left to suck air out of. So because the walls had exploded, there's no air to be, there's no uh, air to be drawn through and then up the stacks. So even if the stacks were working with the buildings failed, there, there would be no release up those stacks. That's not good. What does it mean? Well, when, when engineers design an accident calculation, they assume that the fuel fails at a rate of about 1%. At Fukushima, they believe that the fuel has failed, about 70% of the fuel has failed. They also assume only one reactor fails. At, Su at Fukushima, we've got three reactors and the spent fuel pool, so there's as many as seven or eight reactor cores involved. The other thing is that they assume that the nuclear reactor containments leak at about half a percent per day. And at least on Unit 2, um, most experts believe that the, the, the containment is breached, which means it's clearly leaking more than half a percent per day. And the final thing they do when they assume an accident calculation, they assume that those gases get pulled out and up those stacks. And that's not happening either. So what's happening instead is called a ground level release. Now the next slide is from a, a video that's been on the web. It's a, a helicopter or airplane flyby of the plant. And I've chosen to take a look at, at, at second 37 on the, on, the, on the video. It's only a one minute video though. It's kind of uh, devastating. But if you look at second 37, there's smoke or steam coming out the side of a building. And it's not going up, it's actually rolling down. Now that's called building wake effect. And you'll see it on a snowy day where the snow blows across the roof. It doesn't waft up into the air. It rolls, it tumbles down the side of the building. What that has the net effect of doing at Fukushima is causing the radiation to lie near the ground. Now, there's evidence in the environment that that's occurring. Uh, it's pretty clear to me that the area immediately outside the plant will be contaminated for a long, long time. And I would not imagine people returning to their homes anytime soon. But even out at the 30 and 40 kilometer mark, 20 or 30 miles out, um, we're beginning to see significant contamination, which you wouldn't see if the stacks were working. So. What's my source? My source is the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Association, and agency rather, excuse me. Um, but their data from yesterday shows that the um, areas out as far as 30 and 40 kilometers are seeing a background radiation of about 1,600 times what normal background is. Now, that's coming from a cloud of gases that, that is hanging over the land right now. Those gases are xenon and krypton, and 
They're called noble gases. If you remember your um, their high school chemistry, they're way on the right-hand side of the periodic chart. They don't react with anything, but they do emit gamma rays, which are causing the cloud exposure that, that everyone is exposed to. By the way, they also decay to other isotopes like strontium, um, so that even when they're gone, uh, they leave daughter products behind that get deposited on the soil. So the other thing the IAEA found was surface contamination, and that's particularly disturbing. The surface contamination is 0 0.9 megabecquerels per square meter. Now, you know what a square meter is? It's roughly a, 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 a three feet by three feet, a little bit bigger. And a megabecquerel is a million disintegrations every second. So what the IAEA has determined is that the ground is contaminated with some beta isotopes and some gamma isotopes, but it's contaminated with radioactive material to the tune of 900,000 disintegrations per second. And this isn't on the plant site. This is 30 or 40 kilometers away. Now, in comparison, and it's not an exact comparison, but it's pretty good. At Chernobyl, the IAEA considered a hot spot if the beta contamination exceeded 500,000 disintegrations every second, or 0 0.5 megabecquerels per square meter. So this is on the on the same realm as what a radioactive hotspot was considered at by the IAEA after Chernobyl. It's a serious concern and it's not going to go away soon. These reactors will continue to leak for a long time. Um, I will keep you informed. That's it for today. Thank you. Anderson of Fairwinds Associates and it's Friday, March 25th, 2011. I thought I'd talk to you today about the radiation that's being emitted from the uh, Fukushima plant. There's a lot of confusing terms out there and I was hoping to clarify some of them. The, um, the, on the news, you're gonna hear about the radiation levels over Tokyo were 1,600 times normal or that the radioactive concentration of iodine is five times what the legal limit is. And I wanted to talk about this. There's a couple different concepts in play here that are worth, um, that are worth bringing up. First off, when uranium splits, it makes daughter products. These are daughter products and they split too. They'll decay away and in the process of decaying, it's called disintegration, they can emit three different things. They can emit a gamma ray, they can emit a beta particle, or they can emit an alpha particle. So there's three different kinds of radio, radioactive decay that results from disintegration of these radioactive daughter products. Radiation really means that energy is given up. When this particle decays away, it gives up energy. Well, where does that energy go? It gets absorbed by your body. And that causes, can cause some cellular damage and, and potentially cancer, especially in fast-growing cells of children. Well, the first kind of radiation that comes out of a nuclear power plant is gamma rays. And they're a high energy, like an X-ray, um, but even more powerful than an X-ray. And they're what's picked up on the decimeters that you can see different, uh, different um, news, news anchors using when they're out in the field. Um, I brought my Geiger counter with me and, and I can show you a little bit about what gamma rays really are. And this is a Geiger counter. It's an oldie but a goodie. Um, and you'll see that the dial is reading about 600 disintegrations per minute here in, in Vermont. Now, that's not coming from Fukushima, that's coming from the sky, from solar radiation, it's coming from the ground, from radon gases, and, um, and other things. Now those gamma rays are penetrating this metal shell, and inside here is a detector. Now, I brought my grandfather's old radium-dialed watch, 
and um, I'll put it up against the detector and you'll see the